So I think you'll, you'll find it ironical that uh, Chris and I, I think we shared some of the same information this morning. Okay. So uh, Chris, if you're still out there, I've got some of your slides, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Canadians buying in the US, the, the US real estate industry basically loves Canadians. Um, we represent, and we represent roughly 23, 24% of all international purchases in the US. <coughs> and what's interesting right now, just because of some of the, uh, the restrictions for Canadians getting mortgages in the US as foreign nationals, uh, as Ivan alluded to, a lot of Canadians will take out uh, home equity loans up here or lines of credits to go buy U.S. real estate and they'll pay cash. 86% of can, uh, Canadians pay cash to buy U.S. real estate. And I think Chris also touched on this that <coughs> predominantly Canadians are buying in Florida uh, they're also buying in Arizona. They, they love Scottsdale, Phoenix area for the desert climate and the Gulf. And, and also, it's easy for Canadians to get down there. And as well, Canadians are buying in uh, California, predominantly in the Palm Springs area. Well, it's also all buying the sunshine, right? What's that's, that? what, that's what we want is the sunshine. Exactly. Florida. <coughs> Arizona, you can see the chart is 38 And this is one of Chris's slides. <laughs> but again, <laughs> it just shows, the, slides. Okay, it just shows the, uh, the percentage of Canadians compared to other countries buying in the U.S. Chris, you, you don't have this slide, but I've got this one. <laughs> is it a competition here? Man? No, but it's good. It actually really supports what uh, Chris and Lenar are, are focusing on, which is that Canadians prefer to buy in small resort communities or suburban areas, which are represented by the, the purple graphs there. So, you know, they, they prefer to go to areas like Scottsdale, Phoenix, where they can get into small, small communities, small towns, and own a piece of uh, real estate down there that's near a golf course or near a ski hill or near the ocean or near some water so they can relax and rejuvenate and enjoy their, their home ownership down there. But do you find, okay, my question is, do you find that they are, they are Caucasians or they are Asian? A little bit of both. So, and we can, yeah, so there, there's definitely a difference. Like we find the, the Chinese, the Asians are buying more in California. Uh, we're finding that the, the, the Caucasians are buying more in, let's say, Phoenix, Scottsdale area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is这是说了,华人呢,就是不是去Palm and also, the red graph shows that uh, Canadians prefer to purchase uh, single detached homes. So uh, they, uh, 红色那个, so, single family versus condo, townhome, or, or others. Okay? Okay. <coughs> so, just a couple of notes to make that, um, and Ivan alluded to this as well, that the financial institutions are relaxing their heavy restrictions that they imposed on. Uh, buyers taking out mortgages during the recession period. So the money's getting freed up and it's getting easier for especially U.S. buyers to buy U.S. Uh, properties down there and obviously it's going to get easier and easier for Canadians at some point as well. Uh, uh, as well, uh, it's been popular for Canadians to buy in places like Arizona, California, Florida and Hawaii. Um, and these areas have really rebounded as well. So during the last three or four years, we saw quite a, a dip in uh, the prices in these key areas. But now we're starting to see the, the prices start to move up in an upward direction. There's still really good value opportunities. However, the, the bottom has definitely been hit in most of these markets. Uh, so Yeah, OK, I'm going to translate it. Uh, uh, 2006 uh, 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 u
there's still a few out there, but as Chris pointed out, there's been quite a, uh, a dip in the inventory, and now the, the market, the U.S. market, is trying to recover and start to build more homes to, in anticipation of the demand over the next coming years. And again, inventory getting more difficult to find, and supply is starting to increase. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, uh, so, sorry, inventory is getting more difficult to find. So the supply is increase. low, demand is increasing. Yeah, 供过于求的时间呢已经过了。现在是求过于供. So um, I'm I'm specifically focusing on Hawaii right now. I spend half my time in Hawaii working on uh, a number of different real estate opportunities Hawaii. down there. Yeah. And this graph just shows. Uh, Compared to last year, the average medium home price for single uh, family detached is up from 595,000 to 629,000. That's the upper line. Okay, it's okay. But the house is like a family house, it's 59,000 to 62,000. That's the house. The house is the house. is the apartment. And that's condominium, the 320 compared yeah, to 315 last year. But what we're finding in Hawaii is, is like I said, inventory and supply is getting eaten up. And uh, uh, we're going to start to see uh, uh, price elasticity, elasticity kick in, and prices are going to start to move in the, uh, in the up direction. Okay, because now the price is not much, the price is not much, so they can see that the price is going to go down. And this also shows just that the, the sales over the last year in Hawaii for homes on the blue line and condominiums on the gray line. So you can see it's, it's going to have a few ups uh, uh, in the right direction here. Inventory sales is up over last year. And I think, like I said, we're going to see not only prices move upwards in the next couple of years, also uh, the number of sales are going to probably stay relatively even and maybe start to move up. But it's all about how much supply is going to be available for the market to absorb. 通常都是供求,我們大家都知道是供求的問題,如果供求好的時候,那它的價格會穩定上去,所以這個是去年的到去年的表格。Near Waikiki in the area called Kaka'ako, there was three towers that recently have pretty much sold out, priced in the $750 per square foot range. So these are condominiums. So compared to Vancouver, these are you know, really uh, getting quite a bit higher compared to what we were used to. But uh, inventory in the Honolulu, Waikiki area is selling. Ritz-Carlton uh, recently, a few months ago, released their project for sale, and it is basically sold out as well. They're, they got a few penthouses left, but their average selling price, and this is a shocker, is around two thousand dollars a square wow. foot. Okay. Uh this uh this is uh and uh, Howard Hughes Corporation, which is also a developer, they just released a uh, award center building in December, and it didn't even get to market, and it is basically sold out. They've got a few penthouses that are, are remaining as well, but again, another pre-sale project that has uh, come in at 2,000 a foot. Okay, uh, 最近有一个楼花就是拿出来卖,也是都,公众都没看到的,都已经,里面硬扣的人都已经90%卖掉。他们的价格也是差不多两千块一个平方尺。And then just to give you an idea, there for Hawaii, there's a, a tremendous amount of uh, development planned in the Waikiki, Kaka'ako area, and uh, Howard Hughes is coming on with a number of different developments and um, an ultra-luxury project in the Alamoana Center to uh, to include 250 units just got announced uh, a few weeks ago, and it's going to come on the market in a couple of uh, months. So there's a lot of uh, developers who are getting ready for uh, what we feel is going to be a, an increase in demand for Hawaii. Prices are going to go up, and um, we're, we're seeing it right now. And, and what we're also seeing is we're seeing a, a, a shift in the buyers that are coming to Hawaii. Predominantly in the past, it's been you know, a lot of buyers coming from Western North America and Japan, but we're seeing a shift. We're seeing uh, Chinese uh, coming in. Okay, 他的意思是说, 呃, 很多楼花呢, 
卖，然后呢，很多发展商呃对呃呃对他呃对那个地产的呃市场非常的呃感兴呃就是呃觉得很强。呃，以前呢，通常都是北美跟是日本人去海外买房子，但是现在来讲说，很多我们华人都去那边买房子。Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, if that is.